Welcome back to Maintenance Monday, and today I thought I'd run you through how to use a torque wrench, a tool which will not only help keep your bike and some of its components safe, but also reduce the risk of you damaging or breaking any components. So first up, what exactly is a torque wrench. Well, it's a device used for measuring torque. Torque is a turning force, and in the example of our bike, it's the amount of force that we put through to a bolt or a fixing. Now, torque is measured and calculated by using a lever. So here we've got the turning and pivot point here. And to calculate torque, you take the force which is applied to the lever, so the amount of pressure and force I'm putting when I press on it, and this is measured in newtons. And then you take the distance of the lever, measured in meters, you multiply them by each other, and then you end up with Newton meters, which is the measurement of the torque that you're applying to the bolts. This is one of the most common types of torque wrenches that you'll see. It's got a ratchet on the end, which is reversible, meaning you can do stuff up and undo it as well. It's adjustable by turning the dial at the end, meaning you can set it to a specific torque rating or setting that you need to for various components on your bike. And then on the end of the ratchet here, we can fit a variety of different adapters and sockets, for example, so that we can fit and check the torque of lots of different components. As you adjust and set the torque wrench to the amount of torque that you need to measure, as you apply the force and the, the tool moves, once it reaches that specified torque setting, it will then click so that you know that you don't have to make it any tighter. The sort of torque measurements and readings that will be relevant to our bikes could vary from as low as one newton meter all the way up to around 35 to 40 newton meters. So the higher the newton meter rating, simply the tighter that fixing or bolt will be. And as such, it will clamp on even tighter to the component that is joining together. Some examples of our bikes might be our rear mech hangers, for example, might only have a rating of one to two newton meters. A bottle cage bolt could be in the region of three to four newton meters, and a large bottom bracket threaded cup, for example, is something that will have a higher rating, much closer to 40 newton meters. And it's important that we stick to the manufacturer recommended amounts on all of the different components on our bikes. This means we have less risk of that component moving or slipping. There's no risk of damaging the bolt, or in some instances, like adjusting our seat post clamp, for example, it means we don't run the risk of damaging or cracking our frame. There are lots of different torque wrenches out there and available, some larger and some smaller, designed for measuring different amounts of torque. So a smaller torque wrench, such as this for example, can read between 2 up to around 14 Newton meters, and this is called a TW 5.2, whereas a much larger one like this is suitable for a higher torque setting, for example, whereas this one starts at 10 Newton meters and goes all the way up to 60 Newton meters. There are also digital torque wrenches out there which have an almost infinite scale of measurement on them, although these are significantly more expensive and a lot fancier. So how do we actually go about using our torque wrench? Well, first up, we're gonna need the relevant socket or bit to go onto the end of our torque wrench to fit on the component that we're gonna tighten up. Now, on my bike already, I've loosened off the bolt which holds the derailleur onto the mech hanger itself. So I already know that it's a five mil hex or Allen piece that I need. So I can clip that onto the ratchet itself like that, fairly simple. And then we need to set the torque wrench to the setting of that bolt itself. Now I already know that that needs to be between six to seven Newton meters. So to do that, we've got a little indicator or scale on the handle of the torque wrench itself, and we press the bottom part of the torque wrench up because it's sprung loaded, and then turn until we reach the relevant number on the scale or chart. Now this goes up in increments of two, which means I need to use the scale on the section of the handle that turns to finalize and get the torque setting exactly right. So I can set it all the way around to six Newton meters, which means this part is on zero. And then I need to continue to turn it all the way around until I reach the extra one. So that means it's set correctly. I can then go ahead, put the torque wrench and the socket into the bolt. And I've already pre-loosened this, so 
I can just then start to tighten it up and gradually apply a little bit of force. Now it's important to support the end of the torque wrench as you're doing this. And when I say support it, I don't mean sort of like, say it's doing a good job, like, good job buddy, hang in there. I mean just hold it so that there's no risk of the tool slipping, for example. So we can apply the force through the handle, holding the end of the tool until we reach that point here. So here, you can see that the torque wrench is clicking and that handle is moving. That's indicating that we've reached that torque limit that we've set the tool to, and we don't need to go any tighter than that. We could still tighten it up if we really wanted to, but we'd surpass the torque limit that we've set. There you go, bolt tightened up correctly. When using a torque wrench, there are a couple of things to bear in mind, which will help make your life a little bit easier and make sure that you get really good service life from the tool. Firstly, never leave a torque wrench with it on a high torque setting. So inside here, there is a spring, and if we leave it wound up, the spring will gradually over time stretch and mean that your torque wrench won't be calibrated or as accurate as it could possibly be. So always wind it back to zero. Secondly, try to avoid using your torque wrench to undo lots of components on your bike. It's a measuring device, therefore try to only use it when you're measuring torque. And finally, when you're applying force to the torque wrench, apply it gradually. There's no point trying to rush to make it click as quickly as possible, or you might not have an accurate reading. So there you have it, my helpful tips and tricks on how to use a torque wrench. Hope you found this video interesting and helpful. If you have, give this video a big thumbs up and why not let me know in the comments section down below if there are any other maintenance videos you'd like to see. And to see those maintenance videos, remember to subscribe to GCN Tech and hit the bell icon so that you don't miss a single upload. See ya.